All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and start talking about thermochemistry. Um, we're talking specifically in this PowerPoint about specific heat. Okay. Um, thermochemistry is a study of the transfer of energy as heat occurring during chemical and physical changes. So we're looking at the transferring of heat, uh, and that heat is energy. Okay. Uh, temperature, we've talked a lot about. Remember that temperature is the average kinetic energy of particles in a sample. Um, and as kinetic energy increases, so does the temperature. Remember, when we talk about kinetic energy, we're talking about the kinetic molecular theory uh, that everything moves. Okay, So we increase the movement of it, which increases the kinetic energy. Therefore, so does the temperature increase. Now, specifically heat, the unit that we will be using for heat uh, is Q. Okay, it's also energy. It's the energy transfer between samples because of their difference in temperature. Okay, so when we talk about heat and we talk about the transferring of energy, we're talking about Q. And it moves spontaneously from matter with higher temperatures to matter with lower temperatures, which this should make sense. If we take cold water and hot water and we put them together, we make warm water. Okay, they basically, all the water becomes kind of a neutral in the middle temperature. Now, the amount of energy transferred is always measured in joules. So this Q up here, the unit for it is joules. So anytime you see a number with J beside it, we are talking about Q. Now, heat can be me can't be measured directly, so we measure temperature. Okay, We can't measure our heat, but we can measure the temperature. And the temperature is used to track the transfer of that heat. Okay, when we talk about heat transfer, when we're talking about it, the difference in energy, remember we talked about this in our lab, the delta means change in, the change in energy equals, and change in always means finest, final minus initial. So when we change from our final energy minus our initial energy, we get the change in energy. Okay, and we see that the energy into uh, the system uh, from the surroundings is always positive and the energy out of the system is always negative. That's the main thing. Make sure we highlight that uh, and get that written down. Okay, so energy in is positive, energy out is negative. Now when we actually measure heat, when we are doing measurements with this, we always use a calorimeter. Okay? It's a reaction container that is surrounded by water. And we use the water and we measure the temperature of the water to see the heat given off. Okay? Now the energy given off during a reaction is equal to the energy absorbed by the water. So if we measure the temperature of the water, we can calculate the heat that's given off. Because when it's given off in the reaction, it's absorbed by the water. Okay, so the water absorbs it is the same amount as the water or the reaction released. Okay, so if it releases 12 joules of heat, then the water will absorb 12 joules of heat and it will increase the temperature of it. Now, there's two types of calorimeters that we have. Um, these are two examples of them here. Okay, uh, what we use in the lab is a little less intensive. We're going to do a lab over this, um, and we'll talk about the specific heats and everything else. And it's a really cool lab that we get to do later on uh, after we talk about this. So these are examples of some very complex, and this is one that's surrounded by water, and the reaction goes off, the water absorbs the heat, the thermometer goes up. Um, and then here, we're actually, the thermometer is actually in the reaction mixture. So it's not surrounded by water. We're just actually measuring the temperature of the reaction. A little bit about specific heat, and we've been referencing it throughout the PowerPoint. But specifically, what specific heat is, is the amount of energy transferred during the temperature change all depends on the type of material, the mass of the material, and the size of the temperature. So what specific heat does, it's the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of one gram of substance by one degree Celsius. Okay, so basically what we're looking at is we're looking at 
one gram of that specific substance that it raises the temperature by one degree Celsius. And it gives us a very specific number uh, for each individual substance that we have because it depends on the type of material, the mass of the material. Okay, So if we have a different type of material, we will have a different specific heat. Okay, So there's a different specific heat for steel and copper and aluminum and so on. Okay, and that specific heat corresponds to that type of material. So when we do this, we have to know the specific heat for whatever material we have. If it's not given to us, well, then we can always look up the specific heat um, of that material. Now, the specific heat is measured under constant pressure. So it has to be the same pressure. And since it's measured underneath the same pressure, we get this equation right here. So since the pressures are the same, what we'll get is the C value right here is specific heat. Now the way you'll see it on your formula chart and the way you'll see it, um, me talk about it, is you have Q equals CM uh, and we say delta T um, here. So Q equals CM delta T or change in temperature. Okay. You can also write it like this where specific heat's in the front and that's just heat divided by mass times change in temperature. Okay. Let's work a couple examples of this. Our first example says a 4 gram sample of, gla of ga uh, sorry, a 4 gram sample of glass was heated from 274 Kelvin to 314 Kelvin and was found to have absorbed 32 joules of energy. So when we're looking at this, okay, we see what we pick out. Here we have grams, that's our unit, so we know that that's a mass. We have a temperature change. We go from 274 to 314, so we see that it becomes larger or it becomes hotter. Our temperature goes up and was found to absorb 32 joules of energy. Okay. Now, anytime we see joules, we know that that is going to be our Q. Uh, we see here we have a temperature change, so that's change in temperature. And then we have M, which is mass. So we have our Q equals CM delta T, or you can rephrase it and put Q equals M cat, C T delta T, and use this form of the equation. Now, what it wants us to do is it wants us to find the specific heat of the glass sample. Okay, so we're searching specific heat is always C. Okay, so we use our equation where we have specific heat equals our Q value, which is our energy, all divided by our mass times the change in temperature, which when we plug this into our equation, we'll see that we'll get 32 joules all over a mass of 4.0 grams times the change in temperature. Now this delta, remember it's final minus initial. So we start here, we finish there. So our change in temperature, final, which is 314 minus 274, final minus initial, and we get our equation here. We plug this into a calculator and we see that when we do that, we will get an answer of 0 0.20 joules per grams times Kelvin. Okay, now make sure that we have this unit and that's the unit for specific heat. Moving on to our next example, it says how much energy will the same glass sample gain when heated from 314 Kelvin to 344 Kelvin. Okay, so we're using the same problem as before. So in the previous problem, we calculated the specific heat. We said that it was 0.20 joules per grams times Kelvin. Okay, so we have this from the previous problem. So we have the specific heat. We see that we have temperature here, so it's change in temperature. Okay, we're solving for how much energy, which energy is going to be Q. Okay, so we're solving for Q. Okay, so we have specific heat, we have change in temperature, and it's the same glass sample, so we know that we started with 4.0 grams in the previous example. So we have Q equals uh, M C delta T, or C M delta T, whichever one you want to write it. 
okay? And then all we do is we plug it in. Q equals our mass, which is 4.0 grams, times our specific heat of 0 0.20 joules per grams Kelvin, times our change in temperature, which our initial is here, final is there, so 344 final minus initial, and that will give us our answer. And we should get an answer right around uh, 24 joules. When you look at this written all nice and neat, there's our equation, and there it's written out for us. Now, in our next example, it says if 200 grams of water, so it tells us what the substance is, um, at 20 degrees Celsius absorbs, and it gives us a energy, okay, so it gave us one temperature, and it started at, so this is our temperature initial, put an I there so we know that it's our initial temperature, and it says, if it absorbed that much heat, what will its final temperature be? So it wants the final temperature. And it says specific, specific heat of water is 4.184 joules per Kelvin. So if we look at our equation where we have our Q equals MC delta T, well, that delta T, what it actually means is Q equals MC, and then we have temperature final minus temperature initial. So what we can do from here is all we have to do is solve and we're solving for our final temperature. So basically what we have to do is a little algebra so that we can get this by itself. So the first thing we have to do is get the M and C uh, to the other side. Okay. So all we do is we take the M and C to the other side which will have Q all over MC because we divide by MC on both sides equals our final temperature minus our initial temperature. Then to get our initial temperature to the other side, since we're subtracting, all we do is add on both sides. And we'll get our equation where we have our Q all over MC plus our initial temperature equals our temperature of our final. Okay, so this is the equation we're going to be using. So all we did was we divided by our mass and our specific heat, and then we added our initial temperature on both sides. So we'll take this equation, plug everything into its specific spots, okay? and then we see that this is just the equation rewritten as we did, and then we solved algebraically for that. Okay? And we take everything to the other side. We divide by our specific heat and our mass. And then we add our 20 degrees Celsius. And we see that we get a, or a final temperature of our answer should be 70 degrees Celsius. Okay. On our next example, it says aluminum has a specific heat of 0 0.900 joules per gram degrees Celsius. And it says how much energy in kilojoules is needed to raise the temperature of a 635 gram block from 30.7 degrees Celsius to 82.1 degrees Celsius. So this is what we're given. We have Q equals MC delta T. We have this. We have our... Um, Temperatures, change in temperatures, we have our mass and we have our specific heat. So we go ahead and we plug it in. Q equals our mass of 635 grams. Our specific heat of, we're multiplying by 0 0.900, okay, times our change in temperature, which is final minus initial. Here's our final temperature of 82.1 minus our initial, which is 30.7, okay, and we solve for Q. Okay, so we go ahead and look at that written all nice and neat. We solve for our Q value. And we see that we get, first we get our Q, which is going to be in joules, because we see we have joules here. So anytime we solve for Q, when we're using specific heat, we're solving and we're getting Q in joules. But it said that it wanted it in kilojoules. So anytime we go from anything, which is our base unit, this is our base unit of joules, to kilojoules, we're going to kilo, which is a thousand. So we're going to divide 
our answer by a thousand and that's how we get our 29.4 kilojoules because it specifically wanted it in kilojoules.